Good morning, everyone. We'd like to get started so we can get you out on time. I want to thank everyone for bearing with us uh, and accommodating the move from uh, Wednesday to Thursday for the, the breakfast. Uh, the, I always tell people the worst part of my job is making the decisions about whether or not to cancel classes. And um, so we were uh, fussing around about whether or not to move the profiles breakfast on Tuesday afternoon. And I think we made the right decision given the conditions yesterday morning. So I'm glad you were able to uh, shift your time with us from Wednesday to Thursday and be here this morning. Uh, Profiles of Ashtabula County is brought to you by the Star Beacon, uh, represented by Carl Feather this morning. Uh, Leadership Ashtabula County, Kent State Ashtabula, and Growth Partnership for Ashtabula. And this morning, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the new Executive Director for Growth Partnership for Ashtabula County, Brian Anderson. Brian grew up in Lake County and graduated with honors from Lake Catholic High School. He received his Master's in Public Administration from Cleveland State University and uh, comes to Ashtabula for, uh, to Growth Partnership, most recently working for the Council of Development Finance Agencies, where he served as the Director of Legislative uh, Affairs and Research. Please help me welcome Brian Anderson. Morning. Thank you for all uh, coming out today. Um, I certainly appreciate uh, all of you putting up with the change in schedule, and I do think we made the right choice, even if a few people weren't able to make it to otherwise would have uh, yesterday. Um, the good news is I see more and more familiar faces in the crowd every time I get the chance to, uh, to do one of these. Um, I feel less and less like a stranger in a strange land uh, every day right now. And uh, certainly a lot of very uh, helpful and welcoming uh, faces, and I've been very appreciative of that. Um, I've had a good chance to sit down with most of you and have some basic conversations uh, concerning sort of your take on Ashtabula County and uh, also what, what your organizations and companies do, as well as where we uh, would like to be headed and what we'd like to be uh, moving forward. Uh, I haven't had a chance to meet with all, all of the stakeholders, and this, uh, this presentation that you're going to, uh, to see today is, is certainly a work in progress still. Um, there are stakeholders that I haven't had a chance to meet with, uh, some pretty significant conversations that still need to be had. Um, this will be largely sort of my first, my first take um, at, at really laying out what I see um, in the county and opportunities and the challenges that we have and how we, we build on those moving forward, both um, for the growth partnership as an organization as we transition and evolve and for the county uh, as a whole. Before, uh, before we start to go into some of that, just kind of lay some of the groundwork, I think um, it would be fair to say that over the years, sometimes the growth partnership has been characterized in a variety of ways. And I think it's important to understand both what the growth partnership is and can be before we kind of move on into, into the future here. The mission of the growth partnership is to coordinate and direct public and private efforts to achieve economic prosperity and improve the quality of life for all of Ashtabula County. The partnership is a collaboration of business, civic leaders, and public sector representatives which teamed up to form and fund this private organization. You know, obviously, those are very, very broad, open-ended descriptions. And it doesn't preclude us from being involved in doing different things or getting involved in areas that maybe we haven't always been in the past. Uh, but certainly, it is important to keep in mind that the Growth Partnership is uh, a largely privately funded uh, organization. And while we certainly collaborate, work with, and there are some public entities that do participate um, as a trustee, um, it is largely a private endeavor, um, and we are constantly looking for new ways to reach out um, to various parts of, 
parts of the county. But again, understand at the same time that as a private organization, there's only so much that we can do or is appropriate for a growth partnership to do without significant collaboration with other entities. Also sort of laying the groundwork for the discussion moving forward is what is economic development? Again, a very, very broad, broad concept and oftentimes misunderstood, not always clearly defined what do we mean when we talk about economic development. There's three that I listed up there that are traditional in various academic and professional circles you'll hear, you'll, you'll hear used. Creation of wealth is the, the, the old standard that traditional economic development is used. Um, more specifically, there's obviously now more of a focus on creation of jobs. And then as you go on, you get into more of the, the quality of life sort of aspects, which is sort of the, the end product of, hope of, a, of a successful economic development program. In my mind, I do feel that it's going to be all of the above. There are components of each of those that have to, that have to come into play when you're, when you're talking about what is economic development, and particularly here in a county like Ashtabula County. There are three general philosophies of economic development, and the county and growth partnership have been involved in some more than others over the years. Um, you know, again, the, the traditional old school is the, is the business attraction. You meet with site selectors, you bring in consultants, you tr attract companies. You know, that is kind of what the, the old model that everyone thinks of when we think of economic development, bringing in a new facility or a new company. Competition in that arena is absolutely brutal. It's always been hard anyway. It also tends to be very expensive, and oftentimes you don't end up with very much to show for it at the end of the day. Business retention and expansion, something the Growth Partnership has been involved in and will continue to be very heavily involved in, focuses more on the industry and business that you do have as far as keeping that communication open with them and pairing them with the right opportunities and resources to continue to do business and hopefully expand in your community. Economic gardening is a relatively new philosophy, and it, it doesn't necessarily focus on larger enterprises and business as much. It's more of a, of a cultural atmosphere and process-driven uh, concept, basically making your community as attractive and conducive as possible for not just existing business, but startups small entrepreneurs and things like that, whether it be streamlining your permitting processes, having a variety of different financing tools available to them. It's very much more culturally driven and connecting opportunities with the talent that you do have uh, existing in the county. This is a, another, I think, important distinction to, to make when we're talking about economic development is the difference between community development and economic development. You know, as it says there, in a perfect world, the two are going to be somewhat separate. In your larger uh, counties and or cities, there's fr frankly, there's going to be two separate departments, even within most governments for those. There's going to be a community development person and or department and economic development. Economic development does the traditional jobs creation and attraction. Community development handles the quality of life uh, side of the equation. In Ashtabula County, the way we're currently set up and it's not unusual for other counties like this as well. They, the two are really uh, inseparable right now. Some of the quality of life areas have its, has its own jobs component to it. It's their own industries and sectors that can provide jobs, as well as being a tool in the attraction and retention, not just of businesses, but of, of residents as well. You know, just another quick word while we're sort of laying the groundwork about economic development in general is you know, conversations about incentives, abatements, and things like that always do tend to, to come up in the conversation. And it's easy to portray them as sort of, you know, corporate welfare or, you know, business giveaways. And that isn't necessarily the case, and it certainly doesn't have to be the case, even if there have been examples when that has gone on in the past. Not saying that it has gone on here, but there are certainly examples, you know, both locally and nationwide where incentives and abatements and other processes have been used irresponsibly. You see in the, the top point there that there's a variety of different things that can entail and it's not just tax breaks and abatements, it's various access to capital tools or credit enhancement and things like that. For the most part, the county is generally focused on 
the sort of the abatement or job creation tax credits or whatever the case may be. And those are effective tools that can be used, but there's a lot more out there that we don't always uh, are able to take advantage of. And it'll take some, some ramping up, whether it's building internal county capacity or finding regional partners who are, who are better suited to provide some of those opportunities here for the county. You know, at the end of the day, when a company, whether internal or external to the county, comes to us, there needs to be as many tools as possible on the table to help them uh, bridge whatever the gap is for them to invest here in the county. As I do indicate there, there's a certain uh, level of sophistication and professionalism that goes involved. A lot of these, these tools, as you move up the, up the ladder here, do get very, very complex um, and very detailed very quickly, um, especially as you get into more of the... Uh, advanced sort of uh, tax credit deals, whether it be a new markets tax credit or some of the other um, tools that are available. Um, as I, as I uh, indicated, the words like abatements and incentive, incentives, they, they don't need to be a dirty word when you're having these, these conversations. And sometimes it is easy in the media to, to let them be portrayed as such. Incentives can be an effective part of the entire economic development process. And I come from a background that we talk about the economic development uh, toolbox, so to speak. And it is offering that full complement of, of opportunities to drive investment. Now let's talk a little bit more specifically about Ashtabula County. These are the state employment trends. These are through December 2010, percent of jobs by, uh, by sector. As you can see at the state level, trade, transportation, utilities, about 17%. And you can obviously look over all of those numbers there. Um, two numbers to uh, keep an eye on as we switch uh, slides here are professional services and manufacturing. Manufacturing is at 11.6% and so is uh, professional services at the state level. <coughs> and if you were to look at the, uh, the regional level, uh, the Northeast Ohio uh, metropolitan area, those numbers actually Professional services bumps up to about 13. Manufacturing drops to about 11% even. And here is the breakdown for Ashtabula County, those exact same categories. You know, obviously the, the one that, that jumps out at you first is manufacturing. No secret, we are higher in the manufacturing sector than, than both the state and the region. That is what it is. It is our tradition. It is one of those things that we build on moving forward. The other side of the equation is obviously all of those other sectors where we are behind the, the state average, so to speak. Professional services is obviously the most glaring, where we're 8.5% eight, eight below the state average. It's 95 to 10% below the, the regional average. So there's a, a large chunk of where if there is a, a a jobs gap in any particular segment or industry, that's where a lot of it is going to occur. Uh, good news though, government employment, we're actually below the state average. So as far as uh, people who like to talk about uh, below government, so to speak, we're actually uh, significantly below the, uh, the state and regional average for the number of people employed in government. So I found that to be very interesting. But overall, those are, represent four or five opportunities where there is room obviously for more jobs here in the county as well as you know identifying what is our cluster our our, our most significant uh, area of employment right now as well and then obviously we start to get into our conversation about assets you know we do have a, a very strong manufacturing base it is an opportunity to build from there infrastructure certainly is one of the first conversations you have when you have any conversation about economic development here in the county whether it be ports, rail, transportation, whatever the case may be, we are certainly positioned such where we do have opportunities to build on there. Kent State is another obvious uh, asset that we have here. We don't have as many maybe edu uh, higher educational opportunities as some other counties and other areas in the, uh, in the state and the region, but it is a growing and very significant uh, asset for us to build on. Geography, this obviously encompasses quite a bit. You know, we're, what, a couple hundred yards from the lake. That is the, you know, clearly the most uh, defining uh, element of our geography that is an asset for us that we can build on. 
Um, at the same time, uh, you know, we also have the green spaces and we have, you know, whether it be Conneaut Creek or the Grand River, which provide opportunities for both tourism and the wine industry. Um, critical mass, by that I mean I think the conversation right now, and this goes along with citizen involvement, is the tone and the, the scale of the dialogue that has been going on, I think, in the last year or plus in the county is, is certainly uh, a significant one. Um, there are, are more people that are willing to come to the table and address some of the, the issues and problems and look to move forward and move beyond sort of the, the history and the legacy here. Certainly, uh, a low cost of living is, is, uh, is an advantage. You know, you can get a, an awful lot of house here uh, and property uh, compared to Lake County or Geauga County and some of the surrounding areas. So um, and there are other components to that as well. Uh, port authorities, I put that on there. It kind of goes back to some of the economic development tools that I touched on earlier that port authorities probably represent the best vehicle for that delivery system uh, here in the state of Ohio as far as leasing and owning property as well as being uh, more involved in some of these financing type of deals. Liabilities. And you'll notice that some of our assets are also liabilities. And we'll kind of, we'll go over some of that. And, you know, sort of the, the 800 pound gorilla in the room oftentimes is the workforce and educational levels. And, you know, I'm not necessarily an expert in education or workforce. Thankfully, there are other people, many of them in this room, who are. So, um, you know, I welcome the opportunity to, to have some of that conversation. Manufacturing base can also be a liability. A liability to the point where you're so singularly driven or focused on one aspect of your economy that you're not building new opportunities or moving into different areas. You're letting it define your future as well as your past. <coughs> and obviously there's a component to manufacturing where if you're not driving uh, in the right areas, whether it be more innovative or higher level value added types of manufacturing, you do get into the situation where those are going to be lower wage jobs in terms of sort of the overall scope of manufacturing. Geography, also a liability. You know, the conversation will, will come up repeatedly. It'll come up in conversation repeatedly. You know, look at Geauga County, look at Lake County. Well, the geography that creates all of this green space and pristine beaches and whatnot is, uh, to be honest, a product of where we are situated to Cleveland and or other regions here. You know, if you look at Lake County, development kind of stops at the half hour line for the commute to downtown Cleveland. So there is that challenge that we're not going to be the same type of, of bedroom community and attract citizens and residents based solely on that. Now, certainly we do have a lack of retail. It has come up before and there are ongoing conversations um, at the county level to, to address some of those areas and that goes back to the, some of the quality of life conversation that when you're looking to you know, retain the talents that you have and attract new talent, that those are part of the conversations that, that go on. Political fragmentation. I think uh, it's no secret that uh, some of the, the political landscape can be somewhat uh, volatile, to say the least, here in the county. There are um, certainly issues uh, involved there. And that is, you know, more than anything, one of the easiest things for outside investment to pick up on is that sort of fragmentation and lack of, uh, of solidar solidarity moving forward, whether it be within individual communities or, within com or between communities within the county. And obviously in this current environment, you know, uh, government budgets are what they are. Everyone is stretched very thin as far as looking, having to look at layoffs, reducing services, whatever the case may be, without having to raise taxes at the same time. And we touch on right there on, on, on culture, and it kind of goes into some of the other things about political fragmentation and some of the other areas. And you know, the world is a mouse click away. Some of the things that are, are done and said in the county, you know, that's going to be the first thing that's going to pop up on a Google search if you're a, a company or even just a, a person thinking about moving to the county. You know, you certainly, it's easy to think of uh, the covered bridges and wineries and some of those positive things, but. Uh, Reality is, uh, perception is reality, and unfortunately some of those uh, other things uh, do trump some of our assets at the same time. Kind of expanding on sort of the cultural aspect of it, um, I don't know how many of you have seen these books. 
It is from the Images of America series. This is the Ashtabula People and Places book and uh, put together by Evelyn Schaefer, who I believe is a local resident. Is she here? Hi, Evelyn. Anyway, I'm, I'm a history junkie, so my father's a history teacher, so I'll go to bookstores and libraries and I'll gravitate right towards these types of books, and I think I checked all of them out of the Geneva Library the other day, so um, I certainly enjoy them. And you know, I went all the way through this book, and if any of you are actually looking for some pictures of some of the people in this room from 20 or 30 years ago, there's some really good pictures in here, so I recommend uh, picking it up. But uh, you know, besides being very informative to me, I thought the, uh, the inside cover um, the dedication was uh, interesting to me. Dedicated to the people of Ashtabula, Ashtabula County. They treasure their past. And that's a reoccurring theme that I hear. And, you know, there's certainly nothing wrong with that. And it's great to be proud of your past and where we've been and where we've come from. But at the same time, is that pride, is that conversation about our past and what, the way things used to be, is that is that reached the point where it's paralyzing us moving forward. We're not unique as far as regions and cities that have gone through some of the industrial and economic transitions and we have to be careful not to let the old ways of doing things and the old paradigm constrain where we're going uh, and where we're headed. Also, Branding has come up quite a bit in a variety of groups, whether it be at the county level with the Economic Development Committee, uh, some of the Convention and Visitors Bureau things that are going on, wineries, whatever the case may be. And those are great. Those are all generally focused towards external branding, <coughs> talking about to the outside world who we are, what we offer, why, why you want to be here. And that's great, and that's something that needs to continue to evolve and move forward. But as well, there needs to be that internal conversation. It kind of deals going back to the, you know, treasuring our past, and, but at the same time, looking forward. You know, I think there is, has been a certain level of negativity or, or paralysis, that has, paralysis that has gone on. And again, this is not unique either. You know, certainly I think it's easy to go to, you know, maybe, you know, a clerk at a store or somebody on the street and ask, you know, what is there to do here? And, you know, what are the good things about living here? And then they'll just kind of, blow you off or say something worse than that. There is ne there's always that lack of appreciation. It's always the grass is greener. But it is important to realize that you know, the community itself at various levels all needs to be on board on what Ashville County does have and does offer. You know, so, some of you may or may not know some of these statistics. You know, we don't need to harp on them overly, but again, this is a large large uh, factor that we all need to be aware of and have a conversation about what can we do, what is feasible to sort of change some of these, these historical trends. 79.9%, uh, 25 and over, uh, hold a high school degree. It's not great, but it's not, to be honest, that far outside of the margins compared to some other counties. Lake County's probably around 86, 87. Some of the other surrounding co counties are probably at a sim similar level. Where we fall down is the college graduates. 11% college graduates in the county, 25 and over. Lake County is at about 24%, I believe. So while our high school graduation rate isn't that much different, they're two and a half times our college uh, graduate. That's four-year degrees. You know, it's, again, this is not an easy thing to address, but it you know, needs to be a part of the conversation. If you're going to have, you know, the development and continue to build professional, uh, a professional workforce that uh, that's a large part of the conversation. And I don't have all the statistics, but I'd be curious to see what percentage of, of our high school graduates uh, leave the county for college and what percentage of those end up coming back. Again, I don't have all of those numbers, but it would be interesting to see. And again, another one of those elephants in the room is that oftentimes times employers uh, do struggle to find skilled labor and or dependable labor. And that goes across a variety of areas. And it can be at sort of the entry level, lower end, $8 to $10 an hour jobs. But you know, I think it also crosses over into some of the more skilled uh, labor positions um, as well that are going to pay in the $15 to $20 plus dollar an hour range, is that they can't find people with the skills for those mid-level and higher jobs. And there's, then they're in the situation where they're looking to attract talent from outside the county and convincing them to work in the county and or live in the county. 
again, that's just another part of the conversation. And you know, we can go out and try to bring in as many different companies and businesses as we want. But then if they come back to us and say, well, we can't find, you know, we can't find 150 people with the skill set that we need to set up a facility, that's a problem. And some of this is, like, as we'll see, is more of a, a chicken and egg conversation. But it is something to keep on everyone's radar when we do talk about finding higher paying jobs is, well, do we have the workforce to support some of those higher paying jobs? And well, how do we get to that point where we do? Some of the good news, though, is obviously the local school districts are improving. I've had a chance to go out and see some of the facilities. They're absolutely beautiful. And I do think, you know, compared to five or ten years ago, I think the atmosphere and the conversation in the, the local educational uh, arena is certainly much more positive and much different uh, than it had been in the past. And we touched on it before, but, you know, steps, serious steps need to be taken to retain our young talent. And, you know, it, it, it's important to have that conversation where, you know, do well in school, go to college. But the next step of that is go to college and there'll be, there are opportunities here for you in the county. Not go to college and go find a job somewhere else when you get out of college. And we'll just touch on this quickly. 38% of the workforce here in the county commutes out. I'm curious what percentage commutes in. I don't think they actually track that number because it gets a little bit, that math gets a little bit harder. Um, I'm not sure if that's even a good or a bad thing. I mean, Lake County has certainly a significant number of commuters, but it, it's something that comes up uh, in the conversation. And we'd like to see more job than investment here, but at the same time, attracting people to live, on, uh, live in one of our sort of border communities to another metro area who want to live here but not necessarily work here isn't necessarily a bad thing either. And with those sorts of people, you do get back into those quality of life conversations, whether it be housing, retail, and things like that. You know, sort of, sort of in general, we are older, less educated, and less affluent than the rest of the state and adjacent counties. Median age in the county is a little bit over 39. Uh, the state, I believe, is about 36. That's a pretty significant uh, difference. And again, it goes back to the attracting and retaining uh, our, local, our local young people. We kind of touched on it as well, that traditional economic development, when we get into the economic development, community development breakdown, doesn't necessarily fix all of that. And certainly not overnight, if, they, if it ever is possible purely through traditional economic development. And this is where we get into the quality of life conversations. And it is going to need to be a holistic approach and conversation at the county to, to take a look at where our demographics are and you know, where we need to be and where we need to be trending towards moving forward. Talking about benchmarking. And as I indicated, this has come up quite a bit in the past as well is people will look at a Menor or a Geauga County and, you know, sort of, sort of a, a jealousy complex, so to speak, and why can't we be more than them? And I think we've touched on some of those reasons uh, why we aren't like them already. And part of it is the geography that I mentioned as far as just, you know, the spatial relationship between us and other, you know, other metro areas, as well as, you know, the edu educational level. They have a different type of workforce. They have, they have a different history and a different a different uh, process of development that they've gone through. And it's important to, to be aware of what's going on in those counties because there is significant crossover, but both at the business level as well as, as the personal uh, level as well. But in general, when we're talking about who are we comparing ourselves to, I think uh, to sort of have a realistic expectation and really understand where we are and where we can be and just to sort of brainstorm ideas and what other communities are doing. I think those are four, four counties that are more similar to us than Lake and Geauga are. Uh, I don't know if any of you are, are familiar with any of those. Huron and Erie County are, are the two counties op on the opposite side of Cleveland beyond Lorain County. So they're in the exact same geographic distance from Cleveland as we are. Uh, Erie's along the lake. Huron's a little bit further inland. Huron is predominantly agriculturally based. Erie uh, is a little bit more uh, tourism based probably. They have the islands and those areas up there that they spawn off of. So actually if you, had the, if you combine those two counties, you'd basically have Ashtabula County. You would have the, uh, you know, or at least the potential to be in Ashtabula County. 
with you know an Erie County focusing on tourism along the lake, building on that, and here on county, not unlike our South County, much more agriculturally based. Wayne County is south of, of Medina County here in the Cleveland area, and they uh, they don't have some of the same assets that, that we have in terms of the lake and some of those other things, but at the same time they have actually an incredible credible uh, economy there and. I don't know if this is still true or not, but I believe at one time Worcester, which is the, uh, the, the, the county seat there, had the highest rate per capita of PhDs in the state. And that's driven partially by the fact that they do have Worcester College there, so they obviously they have that sort of college town which isn't always repl uh, able to duplicate. Uh, but at the same time, they've done a much better job of fostering and engaging and building their OSU extension. A lot of those PhDs are all in the agricultural community. And certainly you're talking about a different sort of, uh, of, of process and drivers when you're talking about that skilled of a, of a labor force. Uh, the Defiance County is a little bit further west. Um, they're sort of even at the more extreme end of the industrial emphasis than we are. They're at 32, 33% uh, industrial. And they took it on the chin very, very hard when the downturn hit, when you were at the, those kind of levels. They, they were pushing 16 to 18% unemployment there for, for quite a few months. Um, they've since come down from that. Um, they're probably around about 11% right now. But again, they're going right down that same path though at the same time. All of those new jobs that they've brought back in are those old industrial jobs. <coughs> and next time there's a downturn when you're still at 33 some odd percent in manufacturing, that unemployment rate's jumping right back to 18%. And I would just say in general, Wayne County, besides some of the demographic differences, they do an excellent job in their economic development uh, delivery system. Their economic development uh, corporation there in the county is probably one of the better ones in the entire state. And that's been a conscious effort over the years to invest and add capacity to their economic development delivery system. And they offer a wide variety of tools. Just to touch on the, the county economic development steering committee. You know, for those of you who don't know, this is sort of the, the, the standing committee that grew out of the strategic planning process that went on last year. I obviously was not a part of that gathering of, of information and the put to, putting together of that document, but I've had the opportunity to sit on three or four of the, the steering committee uh, meetings now. And uh, I'm generally very positive um, about where, where that committee stands and kind of where it's going. It's easy for us to spend whatever X amount of dollars that we had available and amount of time and the hundreds of people who were involved in putting that sort of plan together. It's easy to publish it and pat ourselves on the back and put it on the shelf and move on and go back to how we used to be doing things. And you know, this is obviously where we're at that proverbial fork in the road. We can continue um, kind of with the way business has always been and we find kind of all go our own separate ways. And oftentimes people are, everyone in these groups have very, very well-meaning, very good intentions, but it's kind of the, the random acts of good only get you so far. There needs to be more of that level of, of cooperation. And this is that opportunity to continue that open dialogue and not only just talk about it, but actually decide who is doing what and where do we move forward from based upon those, those 20, 20 goals that were, were set by that original strategic planning group. This is sort of the, you know, what do we want to be when we grow up conversation. You know, and, and there, there isn't a right or wrong answer, but there's a lot of different areas that, that are in play. You know, I don't want to give the impression that I am anti-industry or anti-manufacturing. It's going to be a part of the conversation. It's a question of sort of <coughs> targeting and focusing in on what components of, of that manufacturing uh, base are best suited for us moving forward. We talk about green space, you know, Mark Winchell, this often brings up in our meetings at the county level about, you know, we are sort of that last green postage stamp between, between Cleveland and Erie. And that's important to keep in mind because, you know, sort of the, the flip side of, of success and development is you lose some of those things that I do think many people here in the county do cherish are a lot of those green spaces. Obviously, we talk about retail and tourism and all these other areas. And they're all out there and they're all opportunity areas and areas for growth. But there needs to be some policy decisions that need to be made and adhered to as far as what are we going to do to foster some of these areas. 
going back to the sum of what we talked about, about culture and sort of cherishing our past and, and the way things used to be. And, you know, obviously the economy is such that, you know, that 500 person to 1,000 person plant probably isn't coming back. Manufacturing, what, what is going to be manufacturing in the future here in this country is going to look very different than it was 30, 40 years ago. So we need to do a better job of fostering small business and entrepreneurial activities and efforts. And I do see some of that going on in, in some parts of the county. I think some of what's going on in Bridge Street with the, uh, the Business of Good Foundation, I think they've done an outstanding job of, of offering the kind of, of services and technical support um, that is needed and isn't really present in many parts of the county. That, you know, instead of waiting for that next big plant or employer to come in, you know, why don't we, why don't we not wait for that and why don't we create the opportunities that we can. There are, there are skilled people here in the county. There are talented people here in the county. And it's getting them lined up with the right resources and opportunities to create some of those jobs. It's no secret that small business as an overall jobs creator is a much better, much better driver than, than some of the large corporations and large industrial uh, plants. Now I touched on some of the general areas there, technical assistance, you know, micro lending, um, mezzanine funds, venture capital, you know, those are all sort of different areas to keep on our, on our radar when we're talking about startups and entrepreneurial activities. And, you know, they're not easy things necessarily to always set up and get off the ground, but, you know, certainly that it's something that needs to be, be discussed and provide more of those sorts of opportunities. Now, if, if we haven't figured it out yet, uh, certainly diversification is going to be, you know, very, very important for our economy. You know, we're, we're heavy on the manufacturing and we're lighter in many of the other industries and sectors that we covered, we covered here earlier today. And it is certainly easiest for us to simply pursue the, the low, low value added, low wage manufacturing jobs and industries. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that alone probably isn't going to, at the end of the day, be much of a net benefit. You're not driving income levels, you're not driving innovation, you're just sort of treading water, so to speak. I kind of alluded to some of it when we're talking about what the future of manufacturing is. And it isn't, you know, the old school version that, that we all think of. You know, and Contrary to popular belief, manu U.S. manufacturing is not dead. It's different. And it's going to continue to evolve uh, for a variety of reasons. Smaller plants, younger products, higher value added, higher skilled labor. And there's sort of that next step besides just a plant that simply makes something coming into the county or existing in the county. It's, you know, looking for those R&D and product design elements and, you know, administrative office components that go on um, for these companies that are important to pursue and not just an, uh, a new stamping plant or whatever the case may be. There's, you know, for every manufacturer, there's also a whole complement of white collar jobs that go with it as well. You know, renewable energy in general is certainly one of those, those buzzwords out there, both in economic development and sort of the media and society in general. And sort of still coming up to speed on a lot of it, but I, I, I had some good background coming in already. But I, you know, I do feel that, that the county's relationship with, with LEADCO, which is the organization that stretches from Lorraine all the way here to Asheville County, Looking at wind turbines, you know, the county is very well positioned. They have, um, and that credit to the commissioners and some others here in the county for making sure we were at the table and a part of those discussions. Re re revenue sharing guidelines are now in place as far as moving forward when we actually do get to the point where we're generating uh, electricity. But again, the, the, the next step where it's going to be most beneficial to Nashville County is landing the manufacturing and assembly of the actual turbines and the installation of those turbines. And, we do have an opportunity there because we do have available land and ports which are going to be required for these types of installations to make sure we're out in front of that. Pace financing, this is just, this is a, a relatively new concept in economic development and it's not something that currently involve, uh, goes on in Ashtabula County.
but it is important to, to think about. It is a, is a tool that benefits manufacturing, but benefits manufacturing in a way that sort of position, positions itself in a new direction. PACE stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing. And it's a, a tool that allows for uh, long-term fixed rate financing for on-site energy generation and energy efficiency. And this is a concept that, is, that was developed, I believe, first in California and has is, is morphed and grown in some different states. Cuyahoga County is still just in the, actually, the city of Cleveland and the inner ring suburbs are actually in the process of establishing the first um, PACE financing district in the state right now. Um, but I think more, even as much if not more than, than that area, I think in Asheville County would benefit from something like this, given our, the number of manufacturing facilities um, that we have. It would provide them a, a tool to look at some of those on-site generation and ener energy efficiency uh, options that, frankly, are hard to finance at the bank level uh, right now. Again, one of our, one of our areas, especially here in the, uh, the north of 90 uh, geography of, of the county, is the agricultural community. In general, I would say that Ohio has done a horrible job of, of supporting its agricultural community over the years. If you were to compare it to Pennsylvania, Missouri, Iowa, any of other, Indiana, any of a other handful of states that have both you know, traditional manufacturing and metro areas as well as significant uh, agricultural components, Ohio is way, way, way deficient in this area. And in, you know, in general, we need to be a little bit more proactive at the state, state level as far as talking to our folks in Columbus about the things that we aren't doing and things that we could be doing. It's too big of a, of a component of our economy to ignore. And it's easy for the folks in Columbus to uh, focus on that 3C corridor and those sorts of aspects and not uh, fully grasp the importance of, of the agricultural community in the state. And again, Aggie Bonds, it is just one of those other concepts that many other states, Pennsylvania included, does an outstanding job. Um, it is a form of tax exempt financing for the farming community. Um, allows for um, lower interest rates. Again, more generally long term fixed rate financing for the acquisition of, of uh, farms and some, some room in there for uh, the acquisition of uh, equipment as well. Just again, another example that the state isn't doing and I think with minimal I don't believe it would require any legislative uh, changes at the state level. Um, a port authority or other entity in the county could kind of get ahead of that curve and be something that can offer uh, a different type of financing option for that portion of our economy. You know, I just wanted to touch upon, upon the, the wine industry briefly, and I haven't had a chance to meet with all of the significant players in that industry as well as some other areas. but. I think it's a good example, though, that it's kind of grown uh, sort of organically over the years. It had some sort of presence here in the county for quite a few generations, and it's kind of reached that, that critical mass point where it's a pretty significant part of not only who we are, but where we're going and what we want to project outward from the county. I think that has some pretty significant uh, you know, ramifications, is that if wine is going to be, and that entire sort of cultural, tourism-driven aspect is going to be important, that you know, we need to be looking at how much suitable acreage there is available, and we need to be taking steps to get as many of those kind of, get the vines in the ground, so to speak. Um, you know, it's, it's a relatively small area of the county that is suitable for wine production, and you know, at some point, some of those opportunities will go away, and you're at that critical, you're at that point right now where you're at that critical mass where are we going to move forward and become a real viable industry or kind of still remain that sort of cottage industry where, you know, we're closed on Tuesdays through Wednesdays and parts of January and February and kind of making those next steps. And I, it's not meant in any way to pick on that industry. I think it's a great example of what has been done by a variety of groups and private business to really move forward and develop a new concept and a new way of, of thinking. A few words on regionalism. There's, you know, sort of a wide variety of people out there, sort of, sort of the, the alphabet soup of organizations, so to speak. Um, Team Neo and Cleveland Plus, Jumpstart, Magnet, Nortech, Bioenterprise, all kind of grew out of the same uh, fund for our economic future uh, 
conversation that has gone on. And again, we have had you know, certainly people uh, here in the county that have been involved in those, uh, whether it be Steve Walling or uh, Stuart Cordell, who have been involved with some of that from the beginning. And there are opportunities there and resources that can be leveraged for in Ashtabula County. But at the same time, you know, if, if the county is going to be investing money and resources, we need to be doing our due diligence to make sure that we are, are out in front of those people, that we are organized in such a way where we're able to take advantage of all those opportunities. You know, for those of you who don't know, Team NEO is the business attraction um, agency for the entire region. And there is, they, last year they had about 90 leads that they pursued. You know, only a handful of those are going to be for Ashtabula County. And we need to, you know, continue to remind them that, you know, we're here and do a better job of documenting, you know, our available resources and sites and opportunities here so that when those opportunities do come along that we're able to make those connections better. You know, regionalism part two. And, you know, myself coming from Lake County and having worked in Cuyahoga County for a while, it's easy for me to get drawn into that whole Northeast Ohio, Greater Cleveland conversation. But um, it is important to remember that there are other partners in the region. And besides Cleveland, obviously we have some pretty good crossover with organizations in Youngstown as well. And I think they have some very good programs and lessons and things that can be duplicated here that have gone on in uh, Mahoning and Trumbull counties. But again, I just wanted to point out that, you know, the growing relationship between the County at Port Authority and the Economic Development Corporation of Erie County. That, that's certainly, it's very unique and, you know, it's crossing state boundaries, you know, while they're only separated by, you know, X amount of miles. And the Erie County uh, EDC is actually a very good one. They do offer a lot of different uh, programming and tools and they've really done an outstanding job of growing their capacity to help grow their regional economy. And Conneaut Port Authority kind of identifying, you know, some of the things that they'd like to be more involved in. Sort of going back to some of those advantages that Port Authorities do have, but at the same time realizing they don't have the capacity to get that operation in Conneaut up off the ground by themselves. Kind of reaching out to, to an Erie County to get some of their expertise and their capacity to help them uh, further some of these deals. Jobs Ohio for those of you who haven't been following, is sort of the Kasich administration move to privatize the Ohio Department of Development. It's sort of a work in progress. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a good or a bad thing until we see some of the details. But it's important to sort of keep this in mind that, you know, we're, we are in the process of building new relationships and, you know, it took me the better part of two or three weeks to come up and rattle some cages down in Columbus to find out, to find the new list of who is still left in the Department of Development and who we still go to for projects. And, you know, they like to pretend that they're still operating as normal, but that's not the case right now because they just don't have the staff that they used to. I would say in general, though, that Ashtabula County has not always done a great job of pursuing state opportunities for funds and investment. And I would just sort of keep in mind that, and it comes up across many, many organizations, is everyone would love to have a grant writer. Well, nobody has a grant writer, but everyone would love one. I think there's a, a conversation that needs to be had between a, a variety of people. So, I, you know, and I get the Ohio Department of Development press releases and they'll roll out a couple a week where X amount of companies have been given R&D tax credits or a variety of different financing tools and, you know, these are six, six month plus processes, but it's not very often you see in Ashtabula County uh, company, business, or entity that comes up in those. And it's just a matter of having the capacity in place to apply and pursue those sorts of opportunities. Where does growth partnership fit in? And, you know, like I said, I haven't had a chance to meet with all of the stakeholders that I would like to, and it's still a work in progress. I think I've had something like 80 some meetings in two months right now. So I'm certainly, it's not for a lack of trying, but there are a lot of people for me to still talk to. So. You know, my, my visions and my sort of concepts are still very much a work in progress. And will involve discussions within, you know, growth partnership as well with our trustees. The good news is, as I've alluded to already, is that there are more willing participants in the process than in previous years. You know, sort of the, the entire burden can't fall entirely on the growth partnership when we're talking about economic development. And there are more interested people involved. And 
a higher level of interest um, in sort of addressing who, who is doing what. And I think the county steering committee has been important in that regard is when that, when that was starting to come together, the easy thing was to say, well, Grove Partnership can do 15 out of those 20 things. And that's not reasonable and it's not possible given our resources and frankly given the role that an organization like ours should play. Also, as I've already mentioned, you know, we need to be more engaged at the regional, state, and federal level. There are tools out there, there are opportunities out there that we need to be continuing to pursue. Sort of a traditional role of, a growth, of, our, of what the Growth Partnership has done has been marketing our sites. We can do a better job of, of tracking what are available sites and properties and get better, more quality information. That's one of the, we have a pretty good thorough list of what we have available but it doesn't reach the, the bar, so to speak, of what the information the companies want when they do start pursuing leads. We have the basics, but not, not the level of information that we do need. And I think our partnership will continue to operate more or less as what you would consider a one-stop for companies and individuals looking to invest in the county. And you know, I think that one-stop has largely been in the industrial sector in the past. I think we need to continue to pursue the opportunities where we do get into more of the entrepreneurial, small business, some service, retail, you know, I mentioned uh, Harbor uh, Bridge Street and the Harbor area, you know, you get into some of that mixed use conversation with office and retail and restaurant and sort of all those different components that, that go into a section like that. You know, just a couple of, a couple of final quick comments here. We can't be singularly focused on one area or industry. At the Ghost for Growth Partnership, that goes for the entire county. We can't be closed off. I think, I think it would be fair to say that there has been some perception um, by various people in the county that Growth Partnership hasn't always been as open to new ideas and new input and conversations with outside uh, groups and entities. And as I already mentioned, we can't be everything to everyone. And it's great to talk about the small business side of it and new programs, but it's going to be a process to ramp up capacity. There's only so much that we can do with our staff and our, uh, our budget that we have at the moment, but it is certainly going to be a work in progress. You know, just sort of a, a few things to mention there. Obviously, we have the 534 corridor in Geneva. Again, haven't had all the conversations that I need to have, but they're, they're certainly coming. I think that is certainly the, the low-hanging fruit on a large scale for the county right now whether it be connecting your assets on the lake with the lodge and the great complex and the wineries and the developing wine and culinary center there in Geneva. That is certainly a, a unique opportunity and one of those, those low-hanging low -hanging fruits that need to be emphasized. And the Harbor District, which I'm still coming up to speed on and I look forward to having whatever conversations and or participation that I can and the growth partnership can in developing that district as well. And the good news is, in general, when we do talk about our traditional employers and manufacturers, is that there is, at least at some level, that conversation about you know, expanding and making capital investments and bringing uh, employees back, either new or bringing them back if they had been let go. So you know, the in finance environment being what it is, it's you know, not going to be the easiest process in the world. But there is an appetite out there now, uh, more so than within the last six months to a year for some of these people to bring, bring back employees and look at investing and also with some of my conversations with some of our traditional manufacturing folks that they are much more open to, to innovation and R&D and looking at new products and new processes and new equipment and that's part of that whole process talking about continuing to be more efficient and more value added driven. I've mentioned it already, a lot of this is a chicken and egg conversation and there needs to be multiple components in multiple areas that need to continue to evolve at the same time. Bringing in new jobs by itself isn't going to be enough because those people want certain type of housing, certain type of retail opportunities. It's, it's the diversification not only of who we are as an economy but of the diversification of what we offer both to current residents, future residents, uh, employers, employees. It's the whole, the whole picture. It's economic development is certainly does not operate in a vacuum and it involves more and more people. The economic development tent when you start to really build it out is a very, very large one. Finally, building on the earlier uh, reference to our book is we can treasure our past and that's great, but there is a future there 
and we need to learn to embrace and treasure the future as much as the past. Again, I appreciate the historical background and identity of this county as much as anybody in this region. But again, that can't be what is holding us back. And we have to look at what we do have, the assets that we have been given, that frankly other places do not have, do not have the same t sorts of opportunities. And really build towards that future and don't let the past, whether recent or long-standing, really limit ourselves uh, going forward. I covered a lot. So certainly, you, there's probably about 397 questions out there in the room right now. Um, I don't know how much time we have to cover some of this. I welcome you to call and or email um, thoughts, questions, concerns, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, we want to be an open organization, and I, I can use as much input from the community as possible. So that will do it for me.